The start of a new decade always feels pivotal. It seemingly offers an opportunity to start on a new path, break old habits, and get clarity or new insight on the things that you may have taken for granted. So I'm kicking off the new year with a pattern fundamental series that I hope you'll enjoy. If you follow along, I think you'll discover that you'll awaken your inner designer and get your creative juices flowing. I'm offering you that new path and new insight starting today. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Pattern Studio. In the first tutorial series of 2020, we are going to tackle a little design project together. While simple in nature, this little woven t-shirt that I've named Ava is the perfect skill building pattern making project. You'll learn how to use contour darts, rotate and design with darts, alter the silhouette, create a neckline facing, and so much more. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna walk you through the pattern development of this very simple sewing pattern from sketch to completed pattern. All you'll need to participate is a basic hip length bodice block that fits and a few basic pattern making supplies. Now, if you already have a personal bodice block, I encourage you to try following along with me using your block. You'll gain the most experience and knowledge by doing so. Now, if you don't have a personal bodice block and want to create one, I have a very comprehensive online course that will walk you through the entire process from drafting all the way through to fitting. You can learn all about that online course by following the link that I will leave for you below. Now, this video series will be ready and waiting for you when you've successfully completed your block. Now, for those of you who want to just have a bit of fun and put pattern fitting aside for the moment, I've created some 3 8 scale block patterns that you can download and print. These mini patterns can be used to practice, so you can still benefit from learning these valuable pattern manipulation techniques. Now, I'll leave a link to those below as well. No matter how you choose to participate, I hope that you'll join me in this fun and simple design project that I know will become a staple in your handmade wardrobe. So let's get started. So let's get started with the supplies that you are going to need to work through this little pattern design project with me. The first thing that you are going to need is a torso length bodice block. Now these particular little blocks that I've got here are the free download that I'm offering you, which I'm gonna leave a link to either below or in the description of this video. Now these particular blocks are a little bit special because what I have done on these particular blocks that I haven't done on my other free scale blocks is I've included the contour darts. Now if you're not sure what the contour darts are, I have another series called the bus circle series which tells you all about the bus circle and what all of these little contour darts mean, when to use them, how to use them and all of that stuff. So if you have a hip length bodice block or torso length bodice block like this that already fits you, the only thing that you need to do is go through the video lessons in order to create your bust circle and of course your contour darts. I have all that information in that series of three or four videos that are going to help you do that. Okay, this is the little free download that I've got. This is in 3 8 scale which means 3 eighths of an inch is equals one inch on these particular blocks. I've got a front, I've got a back and a sleeve, and you're going to see also that there is a little scaled ruler that will go with that. So you can actually do quite accurate pattern work on these very small scale patterns. So I have that available for you for download. If you need them, then by all means, you can download them free. You'll just have to sign up um, through the link below. Um, now, if you have your own bodice block, as I said, I want you to make sure that you use your own bodice block because it's important that you actually go through this process and kind of do it on your own bodice block so that you actually see the results of what you're getting. And by the end of the whole process, you'll actually have a little top that you can sew up and wear. Okay, so hopefully that's clear to everyone. 
And I'm gonna be showing you my bodice block in just a few minutes here, but I wanted to go through a few of the other very, very simple supplies that you'll need. Of course, a grid ruler. This is the standard pattern making ruler. My, I like the brand name See Through Grid Ruler, and you can get these in red or black. I have a paper French curve, but these come in plas clear plastic as well, so many of you already have that. Pencils, I like to have colored pencils available when I'm doing any sort of pattern making because then I can differentiate my lines, my style lines, and all that so sort of things. Any changes that I'm making are usually in a different color. You'll definitely need tape. You'll definitely need some extra paper to work on because we are going to be tracing on our block onto a fresh sheet of paper. For other pattern making supplies, you'll definitely need your dressmaker's measuring tape, paper scissors, an awl, which is just gonna help you punch holes through the drill marks on your pattern, a serrated tracing wheel, which helps you in truing darts, and of course, a little pattern notcher. Okay, so here we have my front pattern piece for my basic block. And you're going to see here that I have all of the contour guidelines already marked on this block. And as I said, if you don't have this yet, by all means, go through that those four videos that I have on, that will tell you all about the bust circle and all of these contour darts and mark them on your own bodice block. It's really, really going to be helpful when you move into more um, intricate pattern making later on. So this is my front pattern piece. And as I said, I've got all the contour um, lines and contour darts put on there. I've also got my back bodice block, which I'll bring in here. So again, I've got my contour darts all marked on the back as well. You'll even notice that I've actually put in a second dart actually in most, it, on the front one as well. This one I have just kind of draped in on my body because sometimes I want a little bit more fitted uh, garment. So that's when I'll use that dart, but I don't use it all the time. And of course I've got my sleeve block as well. These are the three pieces of your basic block that you're going to need in order to work through this project with me. You'll also notice that I always keep record of my measurements on my block so even as my body measurements change I will actually go back and just double check how much ease I have each time I go to work on a project. Okay so those are the pattern blocks that I will be using as we work along and we will do our best to make the prettiest version of the Ava top that we can. Before you start any pattern making project, what you want to do is of course sketch out your design. It's really important that you sketch it out so that you understand exactly what you're going to need to do to the block in order to create the pattern that you want to create. Now when you are doing this, what you're thinking about is what kind of dart rotations or dart manipulations you're going to need to make in order to create your new design. Because clearly your new design isn't going to be exactly the same as your block. So there's going to be a manipulation process that you're going to have to go through. So what you're going to do is take a look at your design and basically decide where the bust dart is going to go, where the shoulder darts are going, and what kind of silhouette that you want to create. So when we look at this little design called Ava, you can see here that there is a slight flare in the bottom part of the garment. The, there is no traditional bust dart, but what has happened is the bust darts have been rotated in order to create some neckline interest. We also have rotated the natural shoulder dart in order to create back shaping, but we've created a design feature here that sort of mimics what we've got going on in the front neckline. Clearly the front neckline is dropped or scooped out in some manner. So we've actually widened the neckline and lowered the neckline based on what we have in our block. We've got a short sleeve instead of a long one. And we've got some, like I said, a little bit of silhouette or a little bit of flare in the bottom hem. So this is a very, very simple style, but it's actually quite interesting. And it's a really interesting way of manipulating the darts in order to get bust shaping without having a traditional sort of bust dart in its traditional place. So once we take a look at the style, we can then take a look at our basic block and see what we are going to need to do in order to create our design. So if we just set our little Ava sketch aside for the moment, you can see here that 
our bust start on this particular block and also in the little mini block patterns that I've provided is I've got a bust start that goes up here in the shoulder area. Now, when we design garments, sometimes it's a good idea to move the bust start away from the position that you're designing with because it makes it easier to basically decide on their position and what things are going to look like on the garment. So what we are going to do is when we trace this block out, we are going to rotate this particular dart into the side bust dart position. Now this isn't going to be the final location of this dart because you'll remember that our bust dart have actually been transferred up to the neckline here. But what we want to do is kind of eliminate the confusion that the bust dart sometimes can cause when it's in the place where or near and around the place where you want to design. So what we're going to do is trace out our basic block pattern and we're going to transfer this dart to the side bust dart position. Now I already have this located on my block. A really good starting point for the position of this side bust dart location is about between two and a half, two and three quarters, or sometimes three inches down. It really, really depends on the size of your block, but somewhere between two and a half and three inches from the base of the armhole is going to be the position of your side bust start. And from that position there at the side seam, you're just gonna draw a straight line that goes up to your bust point. So what I'm gonna do again is trace around the block. I'm gonna be transferring my bust start at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is trace down center front, the hem or the hip line in my case, and then I'm going to trace all the way up to the position that I want to transfer my bust dart to. And you're gonna notice that I'm gonna put a kind of a line there because I wanna make sure that I know exactly where that is. The other thing I wanna make sure is I am definitely kind of coloring in where my notches are. I wanna know exactly where my high hip and my waistline and my hip line are. I'm also going to draw in my dart, my vertical darts. Now I don't need this vertical dart, but it might be a really good trigger as to where um, the position I may want to transfer some flair. So I'm always going to try and put in as much information into my tracing of my block as I can because I may be able to use that information as I'm designing. So I've drawn in my dart points and in this case I'm not using the contour dart positions, I'm using my natural dart positions because I know I'm not gonna be contouring this waist area because of course the style that I'm working with once again has no waist fitting. So it's not actually using any vertical darts, but it is using the position because I do wanna add some flair. Okay, I wanna make sure that I get my bust point marked in as well and those positions. So right now, all I've traced in is the information below this side bust start position and below. Now, I also want to transfer the information that I have up here on this side. So I'm going to, to go from this dart leg, which is the dart I wanna move, and I'm gonna trace around the neckline and of course, the front edge. I wanna make sure that I also have my high across front, marked in so I'm also going to make a little ticks there so that I see where that is when I take my block off. I also want to transfer this contour dart because in our design we are actually going to be lowering our neckline. So make sure that you do transfer those in. So if you're wondering how I'm transferring them, I just have little punch marks through each of those little dark contours and I know that they go through to the bus point and I'm gonna also mark that point at the edge. Now, once I've got this particular area, so I've basically traced my block from here all the way around up to where the dart position I wanna move. Then I'm gonna put my pencil into the bust point. I'm gonna remove my weights there and I'm gonna close the bust dart. Now I'm closing the bust dart going from this dart leg to this dart leg. So I'm gonna shift it so that this dart leg meets the other. And then I can continue on 
tracing the rest of my block, the remaining part of my block. And once again, going to the position of the side bus start area here. Now I don't need to transfer any of these other contour darts because all of that is going to remain the same because we have a sleeve. You'll remember from the contour dart videos that you're only going to use these contour darts in this particular area here if you have a sleeveless garment. And our garment actually has sleeve. So now that we have that information, we can then remove our block and I'm going to fill in some of the missing information that we have because you'll see here that we have dots that are here that represented very specific things. And I'm just going to draw in that vertical dart. I'm actually going to do it as a dotted line because I know I'm not actually going to be stitching this dart. It's going to just be a guideline for me a little bit later. Again, they're not needed. But I always like to have like these little triggers of where certain locations fitting lines are on the garment so that it's always available to me when I'm designing. Here is my waistline. I'm just going to draw that in. Here's my high hip line. I will draw that in as well. Now, if you guys don't have a high hip line position on your patterns, by all means, you can draw them in. I always say just put it halfway between your waist and your hip line. I'm going to draw the partial part of the bust line in here, and the bust line happens to pitch up now simply because we've added a dart. Now, the dart we have here, we are going to move it again, so I'm just going to draw it all the way to the bus point because we are going to be rotating it once again to the neckline when we're done. The other thing that I transferred is this neckline contour dart, so I'm going to just trace that in because I know that I will be using it since I'm going to be lowering the neckline on this particular pattern. Okay, so that's my little contour darts. And we're going to show you how to use that in just a minute. I also have my across front line, which I was careful to make sure that I drew in. So now I have my front block traced and my side bust dart moved all at the same time. So I've got the front part done. Now your next step, of course, is to trace off your back and your sleeve because these are the patterns that we're going to work with in order to start creating our design. Now, if you're wondering where exactly you should be tracing your block, make sure you leave some space at the bottom because we probably will be adding some length here, at least in my design it will. If you like your tops a little bit shorter, you may not need to add extra length at the bottom. But you can choose. You can actually choose what length you want here. But right now, all we're going to do is trace off our blocks and get everything done. So I'm going to trace the rest off and I'll be back to show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we have our front pattern. It's all traced. You'll remember that I transferred my bust dart from the shoulder line to the side bust position. Again, we're not concerned about creating a dart or truing it up yet because we are going to do some pattern work that we don't need that for. So here we have the front. Our back is here. And you can see here that I have basically just traced it as is. Once again, I've taken that vertical dart position that's nearest to the center back there and just kind of plotted it in there because I am going to use it as a position to add a little bit of flare to the back, which is going to match the front. I've traced in my shoulder dart and of course everything, all the other intricate uh, integral pieces. My sleeve is here as well and you're going to notice here that I only traced it to the elbow position simply because, if you remember, our cute little Ava top is a short sleeve version. By all means, if you want to make a long sleeve version, you can absolutely do that as well. You'll just have to experiment a little with whatever design you want. I just thought to make it easier, we'll do a short sleeve. Okay, so once we have our pattern all traced out, we can then move to plotting out our pattern design on our pieces. I always like to start with the front and that's simply because most of the 
styling or the design detail is located at the front. And whatever we choose to do to the front, we sometimes have to consider to do to the back. So I always like to start with the front. Okay, so here we have our front pattern piece and we are now going to start plotting our design. So once again, we're just gonna take a quick look at our sketch, always referring back to our sketch. I have to tell you that it's really important that you do have some sort of sketch, some concrete vision of that design that you have in your mind, simply because it's really easy to get sidetracked with your ideas if you don't actually have it sketched out. So the first thing that I always determined before I decide anything else about the design is what I wanna do is how much length I need to add or remove from the style. Because this particular block that I'm using and the one that I'm hoping that you're using as well is a hip length bodice block, meaning the end of the block here, this line represents the hip line. Now, I don't want the widest part of my top to be at the widest part of my body because it will emphasize that width. So what I wanna do is add a little bit of length to the top because I like my tops longer and I'm going to add that so it goes past that fullest part of my hip. Now, you can definitely choose to make it shorter if you want, and by all means, that's okay too. You can even, if you're very adventurous, you can go into like the crop top version if you really, really want. But I like to have my tops a little bit longer because I'm very short-waisted and so I will add some length. I'm gonna choose to add a about two inches of length to this pattern. So let's just draw in a new hemline position, two inches below the hip line. So that's just a matter of drawing in two inches below and I'm just gonna finish off the side seam by extending out my side seam there below. So now I have the hemline plotted out here. Now, just so that I don't get things confused as we go, it's a really good idea to start marking in some information on your pattern. So I know this is my center front, so I'm just gonna make a indication there that that's the center front. And I'm just gonna, just so it's easier for me to write, I'm gonna turn my pattern around. This is my across front. And I'm going to actually plot all of the other information here. Okay, so we've added two inches to the length. That is our very first step. So the next part that we're going to do is we are gonna determine what our neckline shape is gonna be. So what we're gonna do is basically decide how low we want the neck and how wide we want the neck. Now, this is going to be completely up to you. You can decide by all means what you wanna do. If you wanna keep it really high, it can be really, really pretty style. I like a little bit lower neckline and I'm gonna start probably fairly conservatively and I'm going to draw a line that is four inches from the base of the neckline of my block. I'm just gonna make a little cross mark there. And I'm actually gonna go out by about one inch from the base of my neck at the top there. Now what I wanna do is then draw in my new neckline shape. Now I'm going to first start by just doing it tentatively. So in other words, I'm just going to kind of trace it out. What is important when you're doing a neckline is you definitely wanna come out from center front at a 90 degree angle. So if you need to, by all means, do a little stroke that's a 90 degree angle from your center front so that you can kind of help guide you on in terms of how wide the neckline needs to be. And you can see as you start to work with the lines that you'll start to kind of pick out or sketch out a really beautiful neckline shape. So you can see here that this one looks pretty good. But before we go any further, what we wanna do, since our neckline has to trans transition from the front of our pattern to our back of our pattern, I'm gonna bring in my back pattern and plot out my back neckline at the same time here. So let me just shift this all down. Now what I'm gonna do is, all I'm concerned about is this particular area of the back pattern piece. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold my back pattern block right along the shoulder line I'm not concerned about the shoulder dart at this point. All I'm concerned about 
is really just folding back this excess paper so that I can kind of get clearance and be able to see what the neckline's gonna look like. And I'm just gonna place my back neckline neck point against the front neckline neck point and then lay the seam lines against each other. And you're gonna see here, I'm not concerned about this because I'm not working with that part of the pattern yet. What I am working with is this neckline area. And what I wanna do is make sure that whatever I choose to do for that front neckline is going to transition beautifully into the back neckline. I'm also being very conscientious of whether this particular neckline is gonna drop the back neck too much because I definitely don't wanna do that. Now, as I sketch this out, I'm gonna sort of decide exactly where my back neckline's gonna go. And I think we're gonna to try to keep it within about, let's try a quarter of an inch from the center back neck. And then just kind of Again, sketching in so that you get this nice, beautiful neckline shape. So you can see what we're sort of aiming for here. We want a really nice shape. Now, knowing what that nice shape is, is kind of hard at the very beginning when you haven't tried it before. So the best thing for you to do is just try it and see what you like. I find the, most, the more rounder, more scooped the neckline is, the prettier and more flattering it is on most necklines but you can definitely decide what you wanna do. Okay, so I think that this looks pretty good. I'm gonna kind of go with this and see how that goes. Now I can still solidify this sketchiness by actually drawing it in with my curved ruler. So I do have this little paper template ruler that I sometimes use that is helpful. I'm sort of creating nice neckline shapes. And don't be afraid to move it around. It's absolutely okay to do that as well. So I think that transitions beautifully together. So we'll go with that. Okay, so now that we have our neckline in, we've got our front and back neckline in. We've also going to go, and since I have my back here with me, I'm gonna add that two inches to the back hemline length to make sure that I don't forget about it. So once again, just drawing in two inches below the hip line and extending out my side seam straight down so that I can finish off that block. Okay, so let's stop there for this week. Next week, I'm gonna show you how to use this contour dart, and I'm going to show you how to manipulate this bust dart into those lovely three darts that we have on each side of the front. We're also gonna talk about the dart, manipulating the back shoulder dart into a really nice flattering um, position at the neckline, and we're gonna go from there. Now that we have planned out the pattern design on the basic block pattern, we're ready to manipulate it into the Ava design. Next week, you'll discover how to rotate, divide, and design with darts. I hope you'll join me. Now, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. If you're working on the Ava pattern design along with me, show me your work. You can tag me at in-house patterns on Instagram and Facebook, or use the hashtags, hashtag Ava, hashtag in-house patterns, and hashtag in-house pattern studio. I'll see you next week. Chat with you soon. Bye for now.